Long ago, king salmon from the Elwha were among the largest of their kind, up to 100 pounds. Even after 100 years, we still have the descendants of the original Elwha River salmon species in the lower river. Some 400,000 fish a year were once produced by this river. Now, their numbers are down to about 3,000. The fact that we still have fish left after all this time is a testament to their survivability. For nearly a century, two monumental structures, Lower Elwha Dam and Glines Canyon Dam, have stood as barriers, keeping salmon from 90% of their home waters, their sanctuary in Olympic National Park. Within the first year of dam removal, I expect to see salmon passing by because we have fish at the base of Elwha Dam every year now. Get the dam out of the way and those fish will start moving upstream. At Lower Elwha, once spill gates are gone, workers use rocks and earth to move the river from one side to the other, creating dry access. A demo team blasts temporary passage into bedrock, draining Lake Aldwell by half. And finally, they demolish a four-story concrete plug, allowing the Elwha to return to its original channel. The temporary passage is filled and the site contoured and planted. At Glines Canyon Dam, contractors on a floating barge hammer away at the 21-story monolith, draining lake mills in controlled stages. When the lake level is too low for maneuvering the barge, a series of blasts shatters remaining concrete for removal. With glines gone, the Elwha becomes a river undammed. When we looked at how to take these dams out, the structures themselves are pretty straightforward. The big issue is what do you do with all that sediment? 24 million cubic yards of deposits wait in the reservoirs, enough to cover Manhattan Central Park under 18 feet of material. Physical removal is impractical, so planners decided to let the river do the work. This project is unprecedented in terms of the amount of sediment that's behind the dams. It'll be the largest controlled sediment release associated with the dam removal. What's the depth rating right here? Today, a team of scientists Great. builds a detailed picture of how the Elwha is likely to change once sediment starts moving. Below the dams, the river lacks sand and gravel salmon must have to build their nests for spawning. For at least 100 years, the dams have been storing all of that sediment up into the reservoir pools, and none of that's been allowed to come down into the rivers and make the wonderful habitat that we need for the fish. But project managers face a paradox. About half the material behind the dams is fine sediment, a suffocating danger to fish. How can we allow the river to erode that material downstream while protecting the fish that we need to restore? The answer came after years of study and modeling. Contractors must stop work in the Elwha during times when salmon migrate. And they must pause two weeks for every 15 vertical feet removed from the dams allowing the river time to sweep sediment downstream gradually. So the only reason why this is a two and a half year long process is to protect the fish in the river while letting the river do its work moving the sediment downstream. Pauses give biologists time to move fish into clear water and out of harm's way before the biggest pulses of fine material are released. Three and a half miles from the mouth of the river and just below the two dams, this floating fish trap is the largest of its kind on the Pacific coast. Here, biologists document how many of each species return from the ocean and send some of the lucky ones on a historic journey. This bad boy is ready to go to spawn. Tiny transmitters allow scientists to track them and learn where they lay their eggs. This one's 85 centimeters. It's about learning fish behavior and how the Elwha is going to be recolonized when the dams are gone. These fish will be indicators of what's going to happen a couple of years from now. These salmon are among hundreds of adult fish getting a lift to help reseed the river with their offspring. 
This is a historic moment because fish have not been above the dams since 1912. These fish that we are releasing into Lake Mills can go up 75, 80 miles and get into various tributaries and they'll be able to tell us how they might be utilizing their original spawning habitat, habitat they haven't been able to get to for 100 years. These fish that emerge from these reds, they'll hang out for 18 months in fresh water here maybe, migrate out to the ocean, spend a year, and then come back as adults to a place that damn free. As time-lapse cameras reveal, the shadows cast the reservoirs are growing smaller. You go up there one day, there's a reservoir. You go up the next day, there's tree stumps that have been exposed for the first time in 100 years. That was exciting. These are the largest dams that have ever been removed from any river in the United States. People don't get to participate very often in things like this. And they can tell their kids, I was there to watch the Elwha come back and to watch this river be restored and, and heal. In our next webisode, demo experts make room for restoration.